Hello to you. It's the 4th of August and for some of us that's a rather special day. Why? Uh, well, it's the Saint's Day um, in the Roman Catholic calendar and also he's made his way into the Anglican calendar too, the calendar of the Church of England. It's the feast day of St John Vianney, also known as the Curé d'Art. I first heard of John Vianney because as I grew up I knew there was a school at the other end of town um, named John Vianney. I didn't think anything more of it. I later realised it was attached to a church with the same name. But who the saint was, I had no idea. It was only when I started going to France that I'd see in many of the churches there'd be a statue of a rather gaunt, normally depicted elderly man. And this is him, St. John Vianney. I haven't got any statues myself. A man who, in a sense, exudes holiness and dear to many because he's the patron saint of parish priests. He was born in France in the village of Dardy near Lyon. Uh, just be careful, in fact, if you go anywhere near Lyon. Uh, I got clocked for speeding on the Lyon bypass last year. It wasn't at all clear what the speed should have been. It's lower than you think. 46 years of conviction-free driving, um, all gone in a moment. Actually, I set another one off the following day as well. But thankfully, you don't get any points. You just have to pay the fine. I would have appealed in this country. Anyway, that's by the by. Um, John Vianney was born in difficult times, born in 1786. And of course, if you know your French history, there was a revolution in 1789. Christian religion was proscribed. It couldn't be practised. Nevertheless, he was from a family that was devout and they did all they could to go to Mass. John Vianney grew in holiness, but not unfortunately with the learning that he needed to fulfil the vocation of priesthood. It was a real battle. He found himself being privately tutored by another parish priest. Nevertheless, by the time he finally got just about ready to go to seminary, another problem had arisen. Napoleon was set on war with Spain and he found himself conscripted into the army. He missed the first conscription by being ill and then a second one, he took himself off to pray in a church as his platoon was ready to leave and they went without him. Somebody said, I'll show you the way, but then he took him to another village and he found himself with a group of deserters. Only after 18 months did he manage to make his peace with the authorities and return to the seminary. And even then, it was an uphill struggle. He just couldn't do Latin. And finally, he failed his oral exam, his viva in Latin. Nevertheless, they realised they had somebody here who was so holy that it made up for the lack of learning on his part. He was ordained a priest and after a couple of years as a curate he became the parish priest of the village of Arondombe, or also known as ar sur formont can be difficult to work out just where you should be going if you look for it on the map. And there he stayed for the rest of his life. He was to die at the age of 73 in 1859, so over 40 years in that parish. He kept trying to get away, it must be said, when it said the people went out after him and dragged him back. He could have been a monk, but no, he was to work out his life as a parish priest. He arrived in the parish, and it wasn't the most prepossessing. The people were not the most devout. It was a real effort to get them into church at all, never mind to take communion at Mass. But he did his best that he could, you know, by his prayer, by his preaching, by his meeting with other people. He made provision for the poor. He set up an orphanage, Providence, for young girls, and did much more. The word of his holiness got around and finally 
there would be many thousands of people each year would come to that village of Ar. Not for sightseeing, some may do, not as pilgrims, but so they could hear the parish priest preach as he did at 11 o'clock every morning and still more so that they could make their confession to him or rather to God in his presence. It was said that 300 a day might turn up in the village from spending 12 hours a day in winter in the confessional. He could find himself spending up to 16 hours each day listening to people's confessions. He was said to have great insight into people's hearts, indeed into their souls. And so he never got away. He was always called to listen and listening to convey something of God and of his will to him. He refused ecclesiastical promotion. It said that when he was finally made a canon of the Diocese of Cathedral, he sold the robes for the benefit of the poor. People say the same of the Légion d'Honneur with which he was awarded. He certainly refused to be invested with it and never wore the decoration. His was to be the way of humility. Always, though, faithful, saying his prayers, encouraging others in their prayer, encouraging people to put Christian faith into practice by love of those around them, by service of the poor. He's quite a formidable example if you are yourself a parish priest. But I hope as well an example to us all. This is the prayer that can be used on this feast of St. John Vianney, the Cure d'Ar. God of love, who filled your servant John Vianney with zeal as a priest, pastor and confessor, help us by your grace to win all our brothers and sisters for Christ and to share with them in eternal glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.